and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at the product life cycle. So what is the product life cycle? Well, it's a conceptual marketing concept that shows the phases a product goes through in terms of sales, from the point at which it's first introduced to the market until it's eventually removed from the market. Now, a couple of points to make here. Not all products make it through all the stages of the life cycle. In fact, many products don't even make it past the first stage, such as products that simply flop and are then removed from the market. Another thing to note is that not all products follow this trajectory. So for example, instant hit products. So you can think of the product life cycle as giving us an insight into the life cycle of most products, but not all. And as such, we can use that insight to help us make better marketing decisions. So let's examine each stage of the life cycle in turn. So firstly, stage one, the introduction phase. And this happens when a product is first introduced to the market and typically sales will be low in this stage. There can often be large costs involved in this stage, which far exceed sales. So for example, if you think about a pharmaceutical company bringing a new drug to market, then sales will be zero despite huge R&D costs until the drug is approved and sales begin. Now, this stage is typically characterized by negative cash flow, low sales, and high unit costs. Now, high unit cost applies especially to physical products. So for example, if you're running a factory, then your utilization of that factory will be low while sales are low. And marketing cost per sale alone can often result in negative cash flow. So that happens when a business invests heavily to make its potential customers aware of its new product. So for each phase we're going to talk about today, we'll also look at some common strategies associated with that phase that companies use. So in the introduction phase, you could use a large advertising budget to build awareness of your new product. You could focus on a single distribution channel. Now, why might you do that? Now, the reason is that you don't, with a new product, typically know the best way to market that product. And until you do, it can make sense to focus on a single distribution channel. In fact, you may even wish to bypass intermediaries entirely. So you could do that, for example, by selling directly to your existing customer base. The other thing you want to do is get your pricing strategy right. Now, examples of how you could do that, you could use a skimming pricing strategy. That's typically where you have a high price and by doing so, you're trying to capture the most value from customers. Another pricing strategy is to use a penetration price pricing strategy. And that's where you have a low price. And you have a low price because you're trying to sell as much as possible to capture as much of the market as possible. Now, not all products make it past the introduction stage, but those that do will enter the growth stage. And this stage is identified in the model by rapid growth in sales. In fact, in this stage, sales grow faster than at any other stage in the product life cycle. Now, costs incurred start to fall away as R&D work is minimal. Now, in addition to that, economies of scale begin to kick in as volumes rise. And as a result of costs decreasing and sales rising, profits begin to rise, or if they don't rise, they begin to get closer. You begin to get closer to profit. And it's typically during this stage that competitors, unfortunately, begin to enter the market. They see the growth being experienced and they want a piece of the action. And the introduction of competitors results in price reductions as consumers begin to have more choice. So growth phase strategies. Now, different strategies are required during the growth stage as you try to drive market penetration and maximize your market share. So strategies include widen your target customer base to increase your total addressable market, the total number of people who could potentially buy your product. Another strategy is to increase your distribution channels. Uh, and, and finally, another strategy is to make enhancements to your product, for example, by adding new features. These enhancements are not a one-off event, by the way. It's a continuous process of product improvement to try and sustain your high growth for as long as possible. So next we move into stage three, the maturity phase. And basically rapid sales growth 
can't continue forever. Eventually, every product will enter the maturity stage. Now, counterintuitively, this is the stage when the most profit is earned by those with the dominant market share, the market leaders. And there's a few reasons why this happens. So firstly, weaker players start to leave the market. Secondly, less investment and marketing is required to maintain sales. And thirdly, companies get efficient through better processes and economies of scale, and that results in lower unit costs. Now, during this stage is when most of the revenue is earned by the market as a whole, but the market isn't really growing. So firms fight to maintain or to grow their market share. And they do this by emphasizing the unique features of their product or their brand. Now, during this phase, the market starts to become saturated. And despite sales volume reaching its greatest, profits towards the end of this phase eventually begin to decline as com competition is so intense and products and services become more and more commoditized. So some strategies during this phase include, if you have a dominant market position, then the key goal of this stage is to maximize the return on your product and strategies to do that include your promotional activities should focus on what makes you unique, your unique selling point or your USP. You should maximize the number of distribution channels you use. You should maximize the number of customer segments you offer the product to. You should investigate ways to extend the maturity phase of the product lifecycle, and we'll cover this in a moment. And finally, you should manage capacity and manage your inventories in such a way so that you maximize profits. So the fourth stage is decline. And in this final stage, it's characterized by falling sales and the market begins to shrink. And in this stage, unit costs start to rise again because economies of scale begin to erode. And that combined with sales decreasing means profitability begins to slip. Now, in this stage, the market is completely saturated. There is excess capacity and competitors begin to rapidly exit the market. And there are many reasons why products enter the decline stage. One of the most common ones is technological advancement. So if you just think about how streaming movies has replaced DVDs, another common reason is changing consumer tastes. Decline phase strategies. There are a number of strategies you can use to squeeze the final profit from your products during this stage. So you could cut marketing and R&D spend. You could cut prices to maintain competitiveness. You could consider offering the product to only a loyal niche segment that is very easy for you to service, inexpensive for you to service. Or you could discontinue the product. Now, if the product is no longer profitable during the decline stage, then you may want to discontinue it. It may also make sense to sell off any outstanding inventory or associated assets such as machinery. So how do we extend the product life cycle? Now, if you're a dominant player in the market and your product is in the maturity phase, then it's really natural to want to extend this phase for as long as possible. And that's because this is the phase where you make the most profit. Now, in effect, what these companies are trying to do is exactly as you can see in the diagram here, and that's make the maturity phase go on forever if they can. And there's a number of strategies available to help companies try and do this. So things like advertising to try and find a new audience or reactivate the interest of a previous audience. You could try finding new markets. That can extend its life as well. You could try reducing the price to make the product attractive to new people. You could try repositioning the product. So for example, a sugary sweet could be rebranded as a sports energy capsule. Um, you could try adding new features. So to stay ahead of the competition and attract new customers and again, reactivate old ones. So for example, Apple didn't stop developing the iPhone after they released the first version. In effect, they keep releasing new versions to try and extend their maturity phase of the iPhone forever. And finally, you could try new packaging. So for example, perhaps environmentally friendly packaging could attract you some new customers. Now, all these techniques are going to need advertising so that your customers or potential customers know about 
what changes you've made. But the options to extend the lifetime of your product are only really limited by your imagination. So let's look at an example of the product lifecycle in action. Now, in this example, we're going to look at two products that Apple launched at roughly the same time. So the first product is the Power Mac G4 Cube, which was launched in the year 2000. And the second is the iPod, which was launched in 2001. Now, despite heavy investment, the G4 failed to make it past the introduction stage. So why is that? Well, because it was expensive, it didn't come with a monitor, and manufacturing issues meant that there were often cracks in the clear plastic case it came in. Now, contrast that with the iPod, which made it all the way through the product lifecycle. Now, the iPod was also expensive, but it had a unique design and it was really easy to use compared to competitors such as Sony's Discman. And those two factors combined to justify the high price point. Now, once customer awareness of the product began to spread through word of mouth and advertising, then the iPod entered the growth phase where sales were rocketing. But over time, the competition began to catch up and the maturity phase was entered. Apple reduced the price to maintain competitiveness and capture new customers who were previously priced out. But the economies of scale meant that profitability at this stage was maintained. Now, Apple introduced updated products to extend the length of the maturity phase, such as an iPod with a color screen. But eventually, the market began to shrink as people switched to using their smartphones to listen to music. And this is the decline phase where competitors rapidly left the market. So in summary, using the product lifecycle to understand how products change over time can help you make better marketing decisions. All products begin life in the introduction phase of the product lifecycle. Not all products make it beyond this stage, but those that do enter the growth stage. This is the stage identified by rapid sales growth. Eventually, however, a market becomes mature and sales begin to slow. This is the maturity phase. Although strategies and tactics exist to extend this stage, eventually this stage also comes to an end and the product enters the decline stage. Now, during that decline stage, sales are falling quickly and competitors leave the market rapidly. Eventually, most products end their life being removed, removed from the market altogether. So that's it for this lesson. I really hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.